Ankara, you promised today to tell us of the most important human's rights. It goes like this. After the horrors of war, humans were agreeing on the old world convention. There were many arguments since everyone tried to include as many rights as they could. But they found out it wasn't so easy. Because after all the wars and destruction, there weren't enough funds to give everyone free education and good jobs. Not enough even to feed all the refugees. Besides, it turned out that the more rights, the harder it is to observe and monitor them. How did they wriggle out of this? After a heated discussion, the civilized worlds agreed that it was necessary to emphasize very few rights without which humans couldn't live or develop normally. Note, not to live well or wealthily, but decently. And in the fundamental convention, they included a range of rights which it would be impossible to live without, which shall be in force everywhere and for everyone without exception. And then the next conventions or separate states can give their citizens additional rights. Here are the first four. A right to life, prohibition of torture, prohibition of slavery, and a right to freedom. It was agreed that these were fundamental as they concerned the human body itself. And without them, one can't exercise any other rights. Right, it'd be difficult to use your right to education if you were killed. And what is the right to life? It means they've given me a right to be born? You see, because humans' rights are guaranteed by the state, relations are vertical. That is, relations between humans and the power. It turns out that the right to life means, above all, a right to not be killed by the state. For example, a police officer or soldier can carry weapons, but can't shoot a person without a good reason. So a police officer can still shoot humans. So it means that even the right to life is not unlimited. Exactly. In a situation where a terrorist or a gangster is about to attack people, a police officer may shoot and even kill. But then the courts, up to the old world yep. tribunal, will decide whether it was the only possible measure. And the right to freedom, also limited. Of course, any person can be sent to jail if he breaks the law. But if someone is arrested, an explanation must be given, procedures must be observed, and the ability to defend before an independent court must be granted. A court which decides if it is right to deprive a person of their freedom. Well, okay, everything's clear about life and freedom. What about torture and slavery? The prohibition of torture, cruel and inhumane treatment, means that whatever crimes you are suspected of by representatives of power, they don't have a right to torture you to extract a confession through pain or humiliation. And in any case, the state can't make a person a slave and sell them like a thing. And it must not allow others to do this. Are the first four fundamental rights clear? It seems very clear. I imagined it another way, though. Something like we're all great people and have the right to life and freedom, but it's all about roles and limitations. This is a difference between a great idea and its practical realization, as they say. Welcome to the real world. 